For me, the best part is when we get something in that's poorly and then you get, you know, to go through the process of, you know, medicating them, hand feeding them, you know, whatever it is, God knows how many animals we've all taken home <laughs> to look after. And then you get to that point where they're healthy, they can come here, they can be released again. That's the best part. I became the founder of Hugo's in 2018 after I rescued a little rat. His name was Hugo. Hugo came to me at just a few hours old and I was awake day and night. There was something special about Hugo, but was it that he slept in my bed or he went everywhere with me? Well, in fact, it was his little head wobble. Hugo had a head tilt. Um, and it, wasn't, it didn't start to affect his quality of life until he was around two and a half years old when he was diagnosed with a growth on his brain. And because it started to affect his quality of life, um, I had to make the heartbreaking decision to have Hugo put to sleep. It wasn't an e easy decision, but it was a decision that had to be made for his welfare. Um, and when that happened, I didn't want to stop rescuing animals. I thought if I can help one animal, why not help more? So in 2018, I became the founder of Hugo's in the legacy of Hugo the Rat. Now I run the rescue with my dedicated team of friends and volunteers who are very supportive and I really couldn't do what I do without them. Hi, my name's James and I'm one of the volunteers at Hugo's Small Animal Rescue and Sanctuary. The best part of the job is taking in sick and injured animals, giving them a new lease of life and hoping they go to a five-star home. When the global pandemic hit, all these animals came in um, because of the dramatic increase of people going back to work, etc. And I could no longer do it on my own, so I had to rely on my friends to help me. And then my friends turned into volunteers, and now I run the rescue with my dedicated team of volunteers. Wilson came to us after um, being found in a road um, with a suspected broken leg. Um, when actually he has a terrible case of mites. So he's been scratching and the founder had seen some blood on his um, foot. And then we took him to our vets, our exotic specialist vets, and um, they prescribed him some with some um, mite drops, some treatment for those mites. And he's on treatment for them um, every two weeks until um, his skin clears up and then he'll be ready for release. Um, yeah, I think something that's really, really good is that we're one of if not the only rescue in the area that offers sanctuary to animals you know whether that be wildlife or it be you know domestic pets who can't be rehomed for medical reasons behavioral reasons or, or obviously released if it's wildlife um, i think that's what makes us quite special and especially that we don't discriminate and you can throw anything at us and we'll, we'll find somewhere to put it basically <laughs> hey To keep birds of prey, you've got to be experienced, and unfortunately many people are not, because these birds are so easy to get hold of, um, you can get one for as little as £60, with no licence needed unfortunately. Um, I've got seven years experience with birds of prey, and in my fifth year of training, um, my mentor gifted me Twilight. Um, she was, I'm going to be honest, the ugliest thing I've ever seen, she was a little white fluff ball. Um, with this weird shaped head, but in a couple, in weeks later, in fact, she turned into this magnificent creature. Um, Twilight's a very spoiled bird. Um, she doesn't know what neglect or abuse is, unfortunately. Um, so she lives here at the sanctuary, and I know, I know. Don't you like that camera? She lives here at the sanctuary, and um, gets flown every two days, um, free flying. You get no social life. If you've got a social life, don't run an animal rescue um, because you've got to kiss goodbye to that. It's hard work, day in, day out. Um, it's physically and emotionally draining. Um, there's days where you want to get out of bed, you want to get up and go in, and there's other days where you just want to stay out of bed, stay in bed, sorry, because you know what's coming. Um, some of the cases that come in are absolutely heartbreaking. Um, it's shocking what people can do. The hardest part, when it goes wrong, definitely. You know, you can put so much into 
some of the animals and they can show you know quite good improvement but sometimes it's just it's never meant to be and I think that's definitely the most difficult part like it's accepting that you can you can save some but not all. Harry came to us when he was just 200 grams after being in the jaws of a dog. We assume his mum brought him out for food and she got scared off by the dog and unfortunately abandoned Harry and he didn't make it home. But instead he came to Hugo's Small Animal Rescue and Sanctuary where he's been on a weight gaining program um, to get a bit chunkier, a bit bigger and get ready for a release. Next week he'll be released um, and hopefully stays in the area where we'll um, support feed him and keep an eye on his weight over winter. Has it been any different to the pandemic? Um, I would say in regards to what we do here, definitely not. Um, there's always that workload. But um, I think with people being at home, a lot of people see what's going on with the wildlife in the area a lot more. So we get a lot more calls about, there's a seagull on my street, or there's this pigeon, or... I feel like we've had a lot more wildlife calls than we probably used to used to get, you know, pre-corona. <laughs> the best part of it for me has got to be when you get animals in and they come from such cruelty cases and they go out to happy, healthy, loving families. Um, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing that, really. So one of the animals in the intensive care unit is Emily. Emily is a fledgling wood pigeon. Um, he's got some damage to a wing from a cat, so we've got it wrapped up to keep it stable. Um, she's not happy with her nose at the moment. <laughs> um, we've got it wrapped up to keep it stable, um, and she's on antibiotics. Um, it's very important we have wildlife on antibiotics after they've been bitten by a cat, because cats have bacteria in their saliva which can cause septicemia. So in, within the first 28 to 48 hours, it's so important to have that um, antibiotic administrated. I'd like to think we get bigger, <laughs> bigger and better and we have, you know, a bigger capacity. Um, we'd like to have um, indoor build buildings built purposely for the rabbits, for the um, rescue animals. We do a lot of uh, wildlife rehabilitation and we'd like to have a um, purpose-built building for that. To help more people and more animals and, yeah, maybe, maybe get a bigger presence out there as well so that you know, we almost have like a wider range of people who are you know, willing to adopt and willing to, to help the rescue out. Uh, but we need to fundraise for that and we've had a look and it's going to cost around £20,000. Um, we got him back to the rescue, um, pumped in some critical care um, to help get him some electrolytes, just to get him moving and feel a little bit better. He had a good appetite, which was fantastic. Um, he's still slightly underweight now, but he's putting on weight slowly and is doing very well. She's 10 ounces, which is a very respectable flying weight. Step up. Good girl. Fauna's been in our care around six months. She came to us after we had a call to say an owl is being kept in a dog crate. So we went out and we had a chat to the owners and it was agreed for them to surrender her into our care. Um, unfortunately, Fauna couldn't actually fly because um, her wing muscles were so weak because she'd not been stretching them and she'd not um, been flown or trained correctly she couldn't fly. So we got her back to the rescue and um, we popped her in one of our aviaries with a lot of training, TLC. She's now in early stages of her free flight, free flights training. Um, due to the lack of socialisation Fauna's had in her early stages of life, she's very frightened of people. Um, it's took the full six months just to get her to fly to the glove and be used to me. Um, but we're getting there very slowly and hopefully in the next few months she will be free flying again. I just want to thank every one of my team members for helping us along our journey and we really couldn't do what we do without them and you. So thank you all very much for supporting Hugo's Small Animal Rescue and Sanctuary. To donate, you can donate via any of the links above.